Good Housekeeping magazine calls the socket a historic and heroic idea. High praise for something that looks like an ordinary soccer ball. That's right. It really does just look like a regular old soccer ball, but it's so much more than that. It's a power source for small electronic devices, something that the developing world, as you know, desperately needs. Two Harvard grads, Jessica Matthews and Julia Silverman, came up with a socket, and they join us, and you're holding the socket. I am. Nice yeah. to see you guys. Nice to see nice you. Nice to see you. Because Thanks first, for you us. well, first you think Harvard, so you think brainiacs, <laughs> which, which of course you are that. But what's so fascinating to me about this story is that you decided to take an, a class not for engineering majors, mm -hmm. yeah. and you went in the class and you did what? You thought what? Well, we both had the background in kind of developing context. I studied Sub-Saharan Africa. Jessica is Nigerian. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we had not the technical expertise to draw on, but our stories. And uh, so we, we took stories from, you know, the village, going back to see a wedding. And everybody has this strong love of soccer, but yeah, almost huge. nobody has consistent access to electricity. Yeah. I mean, the class was basically art science, using that to affect change. And we didn't really have the science side, but we understood the art. We knew that there was a beauty in play and um, that that happiness was something that we should try to harness and amplify. And it so made sense to us. So how does it work? Us. Well, basically, it's, I think it's pretty simple. It's just yeah. based off high school physics. Um, it harnesses kinetic energy. Right. So inside the ball, there's a stripped down gyroscope, basically, that is rolling as the ball is also rolling. Mm -hmm. um, and then it harnesses that kinetic energy that's generated during play, stores it in a battery, and then you can plug appliances yeah. right into it. So we brought one of our, our big lights today. So then you just turn it on. Oh, wow, Amazing. look at that. Isn't that cool? so, how, so, yeah. so if you bat the ball around Dims. for yeah. 15 minutes, say, then you could potentially have a light to read by, to do your homework by for how long? Um, well, it depends on who's playing, but for like a normal child, usually about 30 minutes of play would give you about three hours of LED light with uh, our mass-produced LED yeah, lamp. Oh, yeah, 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 go ahead. Yeah. The smaller lamp, yeah. Um, oh, oh, I'm on, doing a yeah. show, show, <laughs> show and tell. You're doing a demo. But tell. honestly, this is actually uh, a model. <laughs> we, we actually have a new model Hello, that's Charlie. coming out. Um, we're going to be releasing it in June, and that's the one that's going to be that much more energy efficient. It'll be able to power your cell phone fully, an iPhone even. Which is huge, because one of the things that struck me when I was in Kenya over the summer at a refugee camp, Everybody has a cell phone. Oh, yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. you don't oh, have yeah. electricity, you have nothing else, but everybody has a cell phone. I had yeah. to update my cell phone because my cousins back home were laughing at me. Like, <laughs> literally in Nigeria. In they Nigeria. were like, wow. They're laughing that's, at you. They're like, that's yeah. your phone. Is yeah. this expensive, yeah. guys? Is it yeah. expensive? Well, funny enough, our, our new version is actually going to be about one third the cost of what people are normally spending on one kerosene lamp over the year. So yeah. it's actually cost effective for the end user and definitely unbelievably cost effective compared to what you would pay for a soccer ball. Yeah. So so Give me a number, Jessica. What does that mean when you said it's one third? What? So, how much is that? So uh, a family for kerosene, mm -hmm. uh, which is the alternative to mm -hmm. you know electricity for many people around the world, they can spend 10 to 30 percent of their annual income just on kerosene, which again is bad for your lungs and everything else. So we don't have an exact number yet for what we're offering the ball for wholesale, and eventually later this year to everyone in the any community. Uh, but but it is going to be about the same price as a, a mid to high end soccer ball. Do you know Sarah? Blakely. Oh yeah, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes. From a Spanx, you probably you just met her in the green room. We were, you guys I, should actually, talk. I actually told her that uh, during one of our early prototyping stage, I used Spanx to kind of tighten in some materials that were in the ball. <laughs> and I Which was like, great. Yeah, I was like, there are a few so prototypes. Weird. So, so this, is a, this is something used. that does good and also is an entrepreneurial idea as well. Yeah, we believe that <laughs> like there, Spanx. there's, there's <laughs> yeah, no yeah. reason why you can't Charlie do good and do Spanx. good business. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah. So where, where, but where is the ball actually being used? Because you can buy them on your website, $60, buy a ball and have it sent somewhere yes. to be used. But yeah. where are those places it's being used? So we're in Central America and Africa primarily right now. We don't have any sort of geographical bias, but that's where we have funding. We're always looking for supporters to help us bring it to new places. But we're in Mexico, El Salvador, Costa Rica, South Africa, heading to Haiti and the Gambia later this year, so we're really Great. excited. Definitely thinking outside the box. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank so you much. so much. Julia, thanks. Yeah. Jessica Matthews and Julia Silverman, thanks.